hello friends i am ashish your instructor now let's talk about the concept of vdc that is virtual device context this is one of the most popular features of nexus environment vdc means you create a logical boundary or kind of partition in physical chassis right now i have this 7010 series device which has 10 modules and almost uh, 100 plus ports of 10g capacity so instead of giving this device to a single customer i can make use of this concept of vdc and divide it into multiple chassis for every customer this device will look like a separate switch for them all right so if this is a switch i can create three more switches out of it and every switch will have same functionality the only thing that i need to do is to manage those from the main vdc or you can say default vdc or the actual chassis okay so right now you can see that if i do show vdc okay there are four vdcs created 1 2 3 4 maximum number of vdcs depend upon the supervisor engine if you have sup1 then you can create up to 4 vdcs including your default this is the default vdc1 is always the default one if you have sup2 then you can create up to 5 where 4 plus 5 one is for default management only if i do show module you can see that it's a sup1 it means i can create up to 4 vdcs okay so i just need to move uh, ports into those vdcs so that those switches uh, so that uh, those switches can work efficiently okay if there's requirement of uh, allocating 10 ports to a customer i can move those 10 ports from this default vdc into that okay let's and how to check membership how to check which ports are part of which vdc the command is show vdc membership if you see the first one it has actually vdc 0 it doesn't have any interfaces vdc 1 has these many interfaces okay vdc 2 has these many interfaces VDC three has these many, and VDC four has all these interfaces. Okay. Uh, my default VDC is this one. Actually, this is my default VDC. So I I have these many interfaces. How to check? You can see that three slash one till four slash thirty two. Show interface status. Okay, you can see that it starts from three slash one, and it goes till four slash thirty two, and only these interfaces were visible when we did show VDC membership. See, and these, uh, like this VDC, actually it has become a separate switch now. It will have CPU, means control plane will be. Uh, divided as well so from user point of view he'll think that he's connected to a different switch named dc1 and 7k-3 but he wouldn't know in in reality that this switch is a part of actual physical chassis okay that is a uh, n7k dc1 n7k and from the default this this just this vdc you can manage all of the other vdcs okay if you want to enter into that other vdcs the command is switch to switch to vdc and define what is the number of that or you can simply say dc dc dash n7k Okay, DC one actually, and seven K three. If I uh, if I want to move into this this VDC, I I would have to mention the name of that. 
you can hit enter now you see that I have entered into this VDC this is one of the ways from logging into different VDCs from default other way is that you configure IP addresses you implement routing protocol and you make sure that connectivity is there okay and you you can even see that if you do show CDP neighbor you will find some devices connected to this VDC as well if you do show interface status you will not find other interfaces into this because you are you are now into VDC number 3 and these are the interfaces allocated to it and these are uh, routed uh, means that layer 3 and these are actually layer 2 alright and functionality of this device will be exactly exactly the same you can run all commands show run show version and show IP interface brief in case you have the IP address assigned show VRF so everything will be same and if you want to connect this VDC to the uh, default VDC or any other VDC then you need to use you require to use a cable okay don't think that they would be in like they would be connecting connectivity internally it is not going to happen you have to connect it as if these are different devices even if even if these these all interfaces belong to same chassis now these will work as a different chassis okay these are by default created now from non default VDC I cannot move to any other VDCs okay there is no switch to command the only command is switch back I can go back to default but I cannot go to VDC number 2 or VDC number 4 that you need to know okay even if you are the admin of this VDC you cannot make changes into other VDCs okay you need to be network admin for that that role is only possible if your user account is created in main default default chassis or default VDC you can see show user account show user account okay this is a VDC admin right now okay this user will not be able to make changes into other VDC because this is VDC admin though this means you have read and write access to make changes only in this particular switch that is N7K-3 but you cannot make changes into the other for that you need to be network admin which is only possible if you are uh, if you are a part of default VDC now let's go back to switch back that is main VDC and N7K1 see this command other ways you can configure IP address I told you you can create static route default or whatever and make sure that reachability is there you can use SSH, Telnet, whatever you want to do alright but there are certain commands that can only work from the default VDC like licensing you cannot update the license from uh, non-default VDCs you cannot upgrade your complete chassis from non-default VDC and also remember one thing when any global change happens or when like you're you know trying to upgrade any module using EPLD image or you're trying to uh, you know uh, move the ports from one VDC to other that will only happen from default okay so it is a kind of manager 